All right, today's video, we're gonna talk about a subject that I think all of us want more of, and a lot of us are finding really hard to get, and that's speed. What needs to happen in your golf swing to generate more speed, so you can generate more ball speed, so you can generate more distance. We're gonna show you the things that you may be trying to do that are actually hurting you from gaining speed, and we're gonna show you exactly the things you need to be doing to get more speed in your swing. All right, Sean, like we do in most videos, let's go through a couple of these, we'll, we'll almost call them speed killers because we see them every day from golfers who come in trying to gain more speed and they're doing at least one of these, yeah. if not several of these. So in essence, it is killing their speed. So we'll start, we'll, we'll give you five of them that we see very often and chances are one, at least one of these five is in your swing. They're heavily on the concepts, but we're gonna go through each five of them here before we get started with the gear. So number one, it's a big one. Number one would be, um, well, let's just start from the bottom, right? Yes. No lateral motion starting back, like trying to not sway at all starting back. Right, and we see this all the time, like right? freezing. We see the, the, the image that golfers have in their head is, I don't wanna like, like you know, okay, you sway and you do all that, right? That turns into, not wanting to do that turns into, 100%. doing that thinking they're keeping the center of this belt buckle right still but my hips are actually moving way forward yeah what he's doing there that is 100 percent a speed killer a, a bad it's a shock killer too yeah so if you're trying to hold them uh completely still laterally and start the backswing you're, you're leaving out all this motion that can help you get things moving in the right direction and also start tilting your hips which is real important when we get to how to add speed Right, we're going to show you a gears here in just a second of what should happen with this. Yeah. Okay, so that's number one, trying to kill your lateral motion. So we've got our pro and our am here. And just a reminder, all the data we're showing is from real golfers making real swings. These golfers get suited up with 32 markers placed at key locations across their body and club. This allows us to see exactly what's happening during the swing. We've also removed the club and ball so we can make our golfers as large as possible. But these are real swings. I gotta emphasize that. These are not practice swings, these are real swings. We wanna highlight a couple things here on the screen. One, the sway numbers you see here at the top are gonna to give you real time location information of where each golfer's center of pelvis is moving. Positive number means the pelvis is moving laterally towards the target. A negative number means it's moving laterally away from the target. Next, we're using these small rotating balls to track each golfer's center of pelvis movements so you can see where they start and where they move to. And finally, we put a thin white line behind their left heels. If you've seen our pros versus AMs video on hip rotation and early extension, you know how important it is to not have a lot of your rear end behind this line. And as you can see here, our AM is in a very prototypical amateur setup with a lot of his butt behind that line. That's going to create an issue for him right off the bat. As these guys start moving, you're gonna see two completely different movement patterns. And these are two patterns we see every day. The pro is moving his pelvis to the right or away from the target as he rotates back. The am is moving his pelvis forward as he rotates back. We're only taking these guys to the end of their takeaways or when the club shaft is parallel to the ground. At this spot, our pro here is right on a pro average of about 1.2 inches of movement away from the target at the end of his takeaway. Our am has also moved 1.2 inches, but he's moved in the complete opposite direction. Anytime there's an opposite movement from what good players do, it's something you'll probably want to correct. Because our am was told that sliding was bad and he should avoid that at all costs, he thought and felt he was turning with a centered pivot. He felt he was turning around the middle of his hips, but as you can see, it wasn't the case. Moving laterally in the golf swing, whether you want to call it sliding, swaying, lateral movement, however you want to describe it, is not bad. It's when it's done and how much it's done, that's what creates the issues. Anything good can be overdone. So here's a great way to know if you're moving correctly to start your swing. Place an alignment stick outside your right leg like we're showing here. Swing the club to the end of your takeaway when the shaft is parallel to the ground. If your hips have moved away from that alignment stick, you're moving your pelvis in the wrong direction as you turn. Instead, you want to see your right hip move into that stick a bit like you see our pro here doing. Doing this correctly will help set up your backswing for a dynamic and athletic downswing. All right, Sean, number two. Mm -hmm. 
And this is one that we both did when we were younger. Yeah. We both have bad backs now. <laughs> I built a little contraption trying to <laughs> yes. so I could do this one. I had a guy uh, who was helping me with my swing. He wasn't an instructor, but he was a really good player, right? You know, when, you're, when you're younger <laughs> yeah, and you go to that. like, okay, this is the best player at the club. Yeah. You get help from him and, you know, you think it's gold, right? Told me to envision both of my knees in a cast. That sounds bad. Right? And I did. I was pretty darn athletic when I was younger. And I could do that. And I got this. <laughs> <laughs> I aged really quick trying that. But we see that all the time. Yeah, so exactly. And I was, I was trying to basically, if you put a shaft down like this across my knees, I was trying to not uh, change the knee flex at all right. with either leg. Like right. I was thinking that someone was okay to come in, but I didn't want them to change this way at all which we know now is, is just dead wrong. Trying to, to hold this lower body still and crank the upper body. Yeah. One, you're gonna be most likely gonna get what we just saw on number one. Like the hips are gonna turn level and move forward. That's gonna tilt the upper body back. You're gonna get in a world of hurt as far as generating speed and maybe a world of hurt as far as pain goes. No, absolutely. I think that one really can uh, do a number on your back and I can speak to that. Yeah, so let's take a look at gears. What we see good players do, what we see fast players do with regards to this. Despite being a simple and straightforward movement, knee bend is something we see cause problems for both pros and amateurs. When and how much the knee bends has a big influence on what happens above and below it. Let's look at what happens in a good knee bend pattern. Notice how our pros knees start changing their bend right away. We often see ams trying to hold their knee bend until late in the backswing, which isn't something we see in great swings. By the time he reaches the top of his swing, his right knee has lost around 10 degrees of bend while his left knee has more than doubled its bend. Depending on how much knee bend you have at address, we typically like to see a five to 10 degree loss in right knee bend with at least a doubling in the left knee. The reason for this is it creates a tremendous advantage for you in the transition. When the right knee straightens, it raises the right hip. When the left knee doubles its bend, it lowers the left hip. That combo puts you in this powerful downhill position at the top, which allows you to really leverage the ground in your downswing for a serious boost of speed. And that brings us to the arrows you're seeing here. We're able to measure the amount and direction of force the golfer generates under each foot during the swing. The blue arrow is the force generated under his right foot, and the yellow is the force generated under his left foot. Here at address, the forces are fairly balanced. As he starts moving and his knees begin to change their bend, you can see how that affects the amount and direction of these forces, each playing a big role in his rotation and his lateral move. It's in this area of the backswing where we typically see great players create the largest amount of force under their right foot. This is where the golfer is using the ground to brace against that movement created off the ball in the takeaway. This is the dynamic starting point for the downswing. Now by contrast, a common amateur move we see is this right foot spike late into the downswing as the golfer is trying to push off late to get to their left side nearing impact. Learning to bend your knees correctly will allow you to create a dynamic start to your downswing, which is a great and easy way to add a bunch of speed to your swing. All right, so for number three, and these are kind of building in sequence as they show up in the lesson tee in popularity, right? This one is just over turning in the backswing unlimited at all costs. Like I'm just gonna rotate my body as much as possible, thinking that that wind up will just be magic on the downswing. This one is terrible. I mean, yes, I see it, it is all terrible. the time. What, what the golfer normally does is I'm gonna just max out my turn. They stand up and one of the reasons they stand up, it releases the body angle so it allows them to turn more. So not only are they turning more, they're losing all these great kind of hip tilts and body right. tilts that they need to make a decent golf swing. So. By trying to do that to get more speed, not only are they ruining the, the, the motion or the plane of their swing, right? Right. they're gonna slow down because they, it takes too much time to get that back to the ball, and you can talk about that. So they're gonna do one element of the swing at the sake of about five other elements That's right. that are very important for producing speed. So you're like robbing Peter, and you gotta pay Paul, Mary, John, and Tim in a quarter on the downswing in the quarter of a second. It all, you always wind up short. So, if you think about this aspect of rotation as far as timing goes, okay, like a good range of motion, which is how much you can rotate from the top of the swing to impact, 
right, that quarter of a second, a good range of motion is 80 degrees. Most normal golfers are somewhere around 70. A few really flexible, young, flat-bellied pros are around 90. So kind of a conservative range is that 75 to 85 in a quarter of a second. What we see golfers in their 60s do, in 70s in some cases, 60 to 65 degrees of rotation because they're standing up, they've got the club wrapped around them, they think this is going to be speed. Now the best they can do is get about 10 degrees open with their hips. And again, the clock face, the one minute mark is six degrees. So just a little bit more than that. The chest is closed, the shoulders are really closed. And you've seen this guy on the range, he's coming through impact like that. Because he has to. Any thought of unlimited rotation, you can't cash in on it by impact There's because you're going to be closed and you're going to have to give all that up by throwing the loft and just throwing the club head at the ball. Yeah, so there's a way to turn correctly that you can still feel like you're, you're making a big enough turn, right. but you're putting the body in the right position to do it. That's so much more valuable to generating speed. Okay, so scrap the idea, and you'll see here what's going to happen with the pros. Scrap the idea of just maximum rotation for maximum speed. That's not how it happens. Here's a great example of why balanced rotation, which we'll explain to you in a minute, is better than just trying to increase your rotation. You're looking at the before and after of an amateur golfer in his 60s, 63 if I remember correctly. And like most golfers over 50, he came to us looking to get back some of that speed lost to father time. He was told that more rotation was the key to more speed, more rotation going back and more rotation coming down. And that's exactly what he worked on. You're looking at his first swing that we captured, and this is him at the top of the swing. He's turned 45 degrees with the hips, 80 with the chest, 114 with his shoulders. Those are great numbers for any age. Now let's see if he was able to use that to his advantage. So here he is at impact. He was able to turn his hips 62 degrees during his downswing. So 45 close at the top to 17 degrees open at impact, not balanced at all. And by that we mean we see great players have equal amounts of rotation on both sides of impact or they're favoring more open than they were closed. So using our golfer here as an example, he was 45 close at the top. That means he would need to be 45 open at impact to be balanced. But that would require him to turn 90 degrees in the same amount of time he was only able to turn 62 degrees. You see why the idea of max rotating in the backswing can most often wind up costing you distance? His club head speed on this seven iron was 84 miles an hour. Now let's look at the swing he put up at the end of the lesson. He's now starting down a little less rotated than he was before. We'll go into detail about all the changes that we made to his swing in our next pros versus AMs, but we changed his rotation here at the top by changing his angles in the backswing. You can see the significant difference in how his body is positioned between his feet compared to how he was before. As he starts down, notice how much freer he's turning and how much more speed he's applying to the grip. We'll talk about this more in a few minutes, but too often we hear golfers given a choice, either be passive with the arms and rotate or pull the arms down and stall your rotation. That's a bogus choice because neither of those is good for your swing. The goal should be to do what our golfer here just did. He got the grip into the club moving faster earlier and on plane, which allowed him, in his words, to turn through the ball like he had never felt before. He doubled his hip rotation from 17 degrees to 34 degrees open at impact. He added 10 more degrees of rotation to his chest, and his shoulders went from two closed to eight open. Oh, and his club head speed jumped from 84 miles per hour to 92 miles per hour. By improving his body angles in the backswing, we were able to improve his transition sequence, add more speed to the grip earlier, which allowed him to better balance out his rotation. And for his efforts, he was rewarded with eight more miles per hour of speed in a short amount of time. Number four, we see this, it's become really popular actually. Mm -hmm. It's the idea, if you remember back the old X Factor days where you would have golfers, it kind of it goes with our number point number two, it's that holding all this, creating this X Factor in the backswing, that eventually turned into trying to create X-factor stretch in the downswing where golfers are now trying to hold the shoulders, yes. fire the lower body, and try to keep that, you know, kind of stretch the Increase rubber band the idea. Stretch. Yeah. And the, the, the problem with that is that there's no time. At some point, that gap needs to be closed. Right. The gap between the upper and the lower body. Right. And if you're increasing that stretch as you start down, you're never going to have a chance to close this. Not only do you lose speed, your body comes in in this hung back, closed position. Now you're affecting the release and how you hit it on the club face. So and this one, this is killer. Yes, exactly right. This one always morphs into the idea too of passive with the arms, 
get the body super rotated, and then somewhere down here you can just blow the speed. It just like just burn like speed that. down there and really increase your speed. That's the opposite of what fast players do. You need that entire quarter of a second to Going. generate speed. We've got to get this end of the club moving as fast as we can early, early so it transfers out to this end. If you wait and hold this end, you're going to be robbing yourself on the business end and you're going to go slower because of it. Got mountains of data that shows that. One of the coolest things about being able to measure golf swings in such detail is that we can learn what groups of golfers do compared to other groups. In this case, we've captured a number of pros who are the fastest of the fastest. You quickly learn what it takes to produce more speed when you're able to study what golfers do who have speed. It allows you to separate theory from fact fairly fast. When the goal of the downswing is to basically go from zero miles per hour with the club head to a hundred plus miles an hour in less than a quarter of a second, it's probably a good idea to look at the acceleration profiles. We can see how quickly the hips accelerate. We can see how quickly the chest accelerates. We can also see the same for the club. And lastly, we can see how fast the left arm accelerates in the downswing. Here you're looking at a different set of pro and amateur golfers. They're going to demonstrate what we commonly see with regards to acceleration. We're using these two golfers because they represent a large data set. They have similar length back swings, which, which you're looking at them here at the tops of their swings, and they both rotate really well. In fact, the AM rotates more and gets more open than the Pro does. The big difference here, though, is that the Pro has 25 more miles per hour at club head speed. So we've slowed down the pro swing to match the amateur's timing. We want you to be able to see what the pro does relative to what the am does and what you can apply to your golf swing. One common trait we see with fast golfers is they get their left arm moving faster than their hips, their chest, and the club very early in the downswing. It's the opposite of being passive with the arms. We see them have very strong accelerations from the top because again, they're trying to get their club going from zero to over 120 miles an hour in about 0 0.220 seconds. Not really something you can do passively. So what we're gonna do is stop each of these golfers in their downswings when their left arm is accelerating faster than the club, the chest, and the hips. As you can see, it didn't take our pro long to reach that spot. The AM, however, never gets his left arm accelerating faster than the other three, which was something he told us he was trying not to do. By the end of the lesson, we were able to help him change his concept, and most importantly, show him how to ramp up his acceleration. How you can change those accelerations like he did is something we're gonna share a lot more about. All right, so let's have a little fun here with our number five speed killer, which is oversimplification. First, let's be very clear. We love simple. Simple drills, simple swing thoughts, and simple concepts. All us golfers come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. We also come from a variety of different athletic backgrounds, and we want you to rely on those athletic instincts. In a misguided effort to simplify the golf swing, we often see golfers strip away key speed producers from their swings. The idea being if I remove enough movement, the swing will become simpler. That's true, but there's a tipping point with that, and we see it tip in the wrong direction all the time. A great example of this is the topic of lateral movement. The fix for too much lateral movement isn't to remove it completely or just move in the opposite direction like we've already seen. We want you to apply that same logic to something as simple as a jump. We can really simplify a jump by removing the counter movement when you lower yourself to the ground. That would certainly make the jump more simple, but would it make it better? Of course not. If you're tired of not swinging with the speed you know you're capable of, start by removing these five speed bumps from your swing. Most golfers will have at least one, you might have a couple, or you might even have all of them. Whatever the case, just know it is fixable. You absolutely can increase the speed you have now with the body you have now. We get to help golfers do it every day. Sean, this is usually the part of the video where I stand here and watch you do some drills. I talk, you actually do the work. Right. Instead of making this just go on and on and on with these four topics, we're gonna actually give you guys a free video out of our new training system. It's our speed generating system. Now, one of our most popular YouTube videos is our pros versus ams on creating lag and hand speed out of the top. One of the most common comments from that video is, okay, great, I understand the concept, but how do I do it? This training series will show you exactly from start to finish how to do just that. And we're gonna give you guys a free video out of that that we use all the time in lessons that will have you hitting the ball farther, have you hitting the ball with more speed 
And how much time does it take typically? You know what? Five minutes maybe if I get them to we've do the seen drill. It. We've seen seven miles an hour in five minutes. Typically yeah. way less than a normal golf lesson. You're going to be adding a decent amount of club head speed to your golf swing just by following what's in this free video. Yeah, this drill kind of encompasses all the things you need to add in speed. Right. And without thinking too much, you just kind of yes. using your, your athletic ability and using the drill to do the teaching for you, which I think is what's so great this about it. This is a very it. dynamic drill. Yeah. You are going to have the concepts from this video, go do this drill and watch the speed increase. Okay? Yeah. We're gonna give that to you for free. All you need to do is go below this video, click on the link, put in your email, we'll send it right to you so you can get started adding speed today.